Good morning. So I know we're in a new situation, a new uh, seating arrangement, so not everyone has their designated seating. So I'm going to give you a minute to find your designated seat, because this will be your new designated seat for today and today only, unless we come back here again next year. But find a seat, go ahead and sit down. We're going to get started here in just a moment. So go ahead and find your seat. How are you, are you guys able to hear me okay? Yes. Am I too loud? No. Good. <laughs> So if you didn't get a bulletin, just raise your hand. Kyle's walking around with the bulletins. We should have more than enough. All right, well, I think we've got pretty much everyone seated now, so please stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We open by singing our first song, Lift High the Cross.
settling in, so I'm going to give them a moment while they settle in. We'll beginning, though, with the opening versicles on the middle of page three of your bulletin. If you don't have a bulletin, just wave your hand around, and there should still be more. Kyle's got them in his hand. Just uh, let Kyle know where to find you. So wave your hand around if you're missing a bulletin. begin with our opening versicles on the middle of page three of your bulletin. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. that wastes 
a noon day. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague can come near you, near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest, lest strike you, lest strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will tample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is Romans chapter 6. Verses 12 to 23. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart of the, to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you have once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you were now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit of you get, get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin and death is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand and honor the gospel. Our gospel lesson is from Matthew 10, uh, beginning with verse 5 and continuing on through verse 21. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the child and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the rooftop, on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, 
Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of many of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together now in the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. As we enter into the portion of catechesis in our service, we are opening up now with the Ten Commandments. And again, let me remind you, the Ten Commandments shouldn't make you feel good. In fact, if they do make you feel good, then we should probably change your name to Jesus. Because he's the only one who got these right. But the squirming feeling, the guilt of not having fulfilled God's law, should very much drive you to your Savior, to Jesus. And so, the Ten Commandments are, You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Having heard, having heard God's law, there it goes. Having heard God's law, we now join together in hearing the confession of our faith, the story of the gospel, the very proclamation of our salvation, the good news itself. And so when someone asks what you believe, you can respond by saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What is the introduction of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that He is our true Father and that we are His true children, so that with all boldness and confidence we may ask Him as dear children as to our dear Father. Boldly and confidently we pray.
from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I have to admit out here in the open air with all the freedom, I might be liable to actually walk off the edge and hurt myself or even worse if I do it with a running start, I might be able to hurt some of you. I need someone to help me for a moment. Uh, can I have a child come up here? All right, Faith. All right, so what I need you to do is help me get secure, okay? And so I'm going to tie this end, and you tie that end to something nice and stable, like the foundation of the cross. Sure. Yeah, give me lots of room, though. I don't want to be able to be too restrained. Yeah. Uh, can I make it over here? Okay, yeah, that'll work. I think that'll keep me anchored down? No. Okay. I think, no, I think we're good. Yeah, let's see. See? Let's see. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, well, it's good enough. We're, we're, I think that'll work. You think the cross? I don't know. It's, it's got a little bit of weight to it going that way. I think we're good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Paul starts our epistle reading today by emphasizing that through baptism and faith, God has called you out of slavery. And you are, in fact, free, but you must now realize that with freedom comes choice. A choice of to what or to whom you will become a slave to. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a second, Pastor, you just said we're free. And you are free. You've been freed by grace through faith. And so the question is, what happens after you've been freed from sin? What do you do now? Or as Paul says in our epistle reading, what then? Through your baptism... You are free from sin, free from the punishment of the law, free to live your life. You've been given grace and forgiveness through faith. And through your baptism, you've even been buried with Christ. You are no longer under the law, but under grace. But as Paul says in Romans chapter 6, verse 15, What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that you now have a choice? A choice to whom or to what you will become a slave to. You see, inevitably your choices will enslave you. 
They will enslave you to the one to whom you obey. Either an obedience to sin, which leads to death, to God's law, or, or, or an obedience to God's law, which re leads to righteousness. We earlier just did the introduction to the Lord's Prayer about our Father who art in heaven. And so let me illustrate this slavery idea, because slavery can be a harsh concept to get our minds around, especially in a world like today where we are racked by racial tensions and injustices and even the past history that our country has with slavery. But obedience to our Father, that's a little easier thing to think about for us to understand because in this earthly life you were born a child of your father you had no choice in that no part to play in that fact perhaps maybe a little into the timing but you were already alive before then and as for many of you your father has taught you everything you know or everything he knows at least or if you're like me, your father or perhaps your father-in-law, as he's joined us today, are still alive and they're still teaching you everything they know. You were born a child of your father. That defines you. The fact defines part of the very essence of who you are and whose you are. But what then? Despite your father giving you every advantage in life through his example and teachings, you have a choice. You get to choose whether or not you obey him. My own kids are fully aware of the consequences of their choices in obedience. They can choose to obey their own selfish whims and desires, or they can choose to obey the influence of the devil and the world around them, or they can choose to obey their father. In this case, me. Maybe you've even heard me do my slow count to three as I say one. Often that's all it takes. It gives them time to think, right? Time to make the right choice before they receive the consequences of a bad choice. Their choice of obedience doesn't define whose child they are, but their choice of obedience does determine the what then or the to whom they will listen to and obey. It determines to whom they subject themselves to. It determines whom they will serve. It determines ultimately if they are a servant to themselves, the devil, the world, or to me, their father. They have a choice. But choices lead always, whether to themselves or to me or to something else, choices lead them to servanthood. And ironically, those choices lead them back to slavery. It ties them to one thing or another. They can be a slave to themselves, and they can untie their lot from God's word. They can join together and wrap themselves all up and just get yourselves all combined. And you're your own slave now, right? And yet then... There's nothing to stop you from going off the edge. You could be tied to something else. Some other sin. You might think that being a slave to yourself isn't that bad, but the reality of this broken world and the sin that dwells in each of us is that being a slave to yourself is the same thing as being a slave to sin, to the devil, and to the world. Because when we obey ourselves, we are curved inward, all wrapped up, tied up on our own self-interest. Which means if we 
only care about me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity, then we don't care about anyone else. Morality then goes out the window. I can seize the day. I can do whatever I want, whatever brings me pleasure, whatever brings me enjoyment, regardless of the cost or the consequences to the world around me. Because all forms of personal enjoyment, whether time or money or gossip or drugs or alcohol or pornography or adultery or theft, revenge, murder even, becomes a lot easier if you don't care about the consequences, especially about the consequences to the world around you. You have a choice to whom you will listen and obey. Thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient to the heart and standard of teaching, tied to the cross to which you were committed. Having been set free from sin, you have become, well, slaves to righteousness. Thanks be to God that we are here today, here in obedience to our Heavenly Father, here even in fulfillment of the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Here, because God tenderly invites us to believe that He is our true Father and that we are His true children, so that with all boldness and confidence, we may pray to and ask Him, as dear children ask their dear father. Thanks be to God that after you were born his child in baptism, he taught you everything you need to know. Through his word, you now can live as obedient children to your heavenly father. What then? You were given forgiveness life, and salvation in your baptism. Therefore, choose to present yourselves as obedient children to your Heavenly Father. Make the choice to be a slave to righteousness that leads to sanctification, as Paul says in verse 19. Now let's pause here for a minute, because we just used a, a very theologically charged word. You've heard me before talk about the difference between sanctification and justification, and those are often confused, but they are different words and have different meanings. Justification is that activity where just God is the actor. It is the word that describes the means by which you are saved, by which you are justified. It's a part of from your works or anything that you have control over. Justification is that free gift of God given you by your very passive recipient nature through baptism, through faith, through various means. Very similar to the life you were given by your mother and your father when they conceived you, you had no choice or part in it. You simply were given life and became their child at conception. God has justified you through faith, through his word, through baptism, because you were redeemed from the punishment of law by Christ. But that's not the word Paul uses here. He doesn't use the word justification in Romans 6, verse 19. He uses the word sanctification. He encourages you to make the choice to be a slave to the righteousness leading to sanctification. Sanctification is the activity where God is not the only actor. It's not just God. Instead, sanctification is where you actively live out that saintly life through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Sanctification is where you actively live a life of ups and downs, where you focus on following God, or where you repent and return to God's commands. Sanctification doesn't earn you forgiveness, life, or salvation. God's already given that to you through justification. Sanctification's not even just a single event in history where God declared you righteous. But sanctification is the ongoing activity where you choose to obey your Heavenly Father and be a slave to righteousness. What then? Choices have consequences. The fruit of your choices will come about for good or for bad. And now that you have been set free from sin, if you choose to be a slave to sin, then the fruit of that choice is falling off the edge to death. <coughs> then, if you choose to remain true to your Heavenly Father, if you choose to follow His words, to remain a slave tied to Christ, then the reward is everlasting life. It's no longer death. Which is why Paul encourages us by saying, but now that you have been set free from sin, you have become slaves of God. The fruit you get leads to sanctification. And its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Inevitably, you're still a slave. But no longer a slave by birth, but a slave by choice. Because through your baptism, you have been removed from the slavery of sin. As you have been justified, you now are given a choice. Choose to live out your sanctification by being obedient to your Heavenly Father. Because your Father loves you. He sent His Son to save you. You have been forgiven. You are free from sin, free from the punishment of the law, free to live your life. What then will you do? Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join together in our offering as we worship God with our tithes and offering. And the choir, if you can come up, will have a special selection while we're collecting the offering.
Please stand as the offering is brought forward. Thank you. Thank you. We join together now in the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the San Juan Bible Camp, for the Heart to Heart Pregnancy Center, for our preschool, for Galinda Allen, Lolita Alston, Ronnie Broadhagen, Belinda Burge, Marilyn Erger, out in Francois' nieces, Ron Fredericks, Millie Glover, Jerry Henneman, Trudy Hoyman, Brittany Jones, Eleanor Larson, Paul and Carol McCall, Kylie Pontine, John and Marion Sperling, Ada Torres, Jessica Trujillo, Ivy Two, Cheryl West, Lauren Young, and the family and friends of Ed Bonds, Mary Mahaffey, and Don Roberts, who passed away recently. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We join together in praying the call of the day. O oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, Keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure in the content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them. Read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.
to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated as we close by singing hymn 971, There is a Redeemer. his son for not only freeing us from being shackled to ourselves or to sin and allowing us the freedom to follow Christ in his words and his ways. Amen. Amen. Well, this turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you for having the opportunity to come out here. I know that's a long walk from any parking lot. So that text, that uh, required a little extra work. And so with extra work comes a little extra grace as we're about to open up a lot of food and turn on some propane and some barbecue grills and have a fun time. We have games, we've got uh, lots of shade. There's all sorts of opportunities for fellowship and gathering together. Uh, we're not going to eat immediately. We're going to start cooking the food here in a little bit. So we're going to get things warmed up and get going. Uh, that'll give us time. We'll probably eat, I don't know, would you say 11 or so? Somewhere around there. So take time, enjoy. I do have one announcement that is not in your bulletin, and that is the uh, details for Ed Bond's funeral. Okay, we just had Mary Mahaffey's funeral this past Saturday. This coming Saturday is Ed Bond's funeral. Uh, I forgot what day that is now. July 1st? Yeah, July 1st. Uh, at 10.30, we will be at the, uh, at the uh, sanctuary for Trinity. We're going to be doing the funeral there. Um, there is expected to be a good attendance, and so if you can come earlier than you would normally for a worship service, uh, that way you'll have time to kind of get through the door and sign the guest book and those types of things. Uh, from the worship service, we'll be going to the graveside for the burial, and then uh, we'll be heading from the graveside to the Westview RV Resort, where the family is going to be providing a luncheon for anyone who wants to join them. And so we're going to be going to the Westview RV Resort for that, so don't we're not doing anything in the fellowship hall, so you don't have to worry. So Carol's like, praise God for many blessings, right? 
Uh, but we are going to the Westview RV Resort, and parking for that isn't designed for large crowds, and so they said that we can park in the uh, that builder's first source. So park there, and then just walk the short distance the rest of the way into the RV Resort. And that first building will be where they'll be. And then behind the building, there's all sorts of little shade and picnic tables and stuff. And so they're just going to kind of have an open uh, luncheon uh, there following the service. Any other announcements? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. okay. Do we have any guests or visitors who wouldn't mind introducing themselves today? Um, I have my parents and my sister and brother-in-law here. They're, they didn't make church. They might come to the barbecue there. <laughs> <laughs> but one of her boys came. This is Malachi. Hello. This is my dad, Sam. Hello. And my mom, Sylvan. You guys have met before. Oh, oh and my friend Megan is here. <laughs> Yes. Can I have my in-laws stand up? <laughs> so this is Hope's parents Ken and Sue Von Ozen, all the way from St. Louis. So they, well, I don't know, Vegas, yeah, they win the award, I think, so for the furthest distance driven, because Vegas isn't quite as far. Uh, any other guests or visitors? I, they're kind, you're kind of hidden. I don't see you real well in here, so. Okay. With that, we go forward in praise and thanksgiving with joy in our hearts that we have been freed from sin and tied to the joys of Christ and his resurrection. Amen. <laughs>